Okay. So let me start with the basic objects that I'll be dealing with. So M, I want to be a connected two N dimensional manifold. Omega is going to be a symplectic form. And I want to have a function from M to Rn with two properties. So first of all, Fi, Fj plus N commutes for all I and J. And also, yep. So this is like the lowest. Okay. So I'll try to, it's like halfway back. Here I can lift it, so I'm fine. F is regular on a dense set. So this is equivalently, we will say this is a completely integrable system. Or just for short, an integrable system. And so this will be the basic objects that I'm working with. And so this implies that F generates a local RN action, but actually it will always be uh, an RN action in every case that we consider. Um, and why, just I'll just note that for all I, there exists a unique vector field on M such that DF is minus Ixi omega. So this determines, this exceeds uniquely, and because they pass on commute, they generate a local RN action. Okay, great. So let me give you some examples of integral systems. So first of all, we can let M be C, and then we just have one dimension. F of Z can just be the real part of Z. So this is the standard symplectic form on C. We can let M equals C, and F of Z is plus minus uh, the norm of z squared. We can let m equal c and f of z equals the real part of z squared. And I should point out, uh, this is called regular. And this just induces a free R action. This we call elliptic. And this generates a circle action of speed one. This we call hyperbolic, and this generates an R action, not a circle action. Can we? Can you guys see it down as far as E? E's okay. E's the lowest. You cannot see well. E is a D is okay. Uh, okay, fine. So M equals C2, and F of XY is the norm of X squared minus Y squared, the real part of XY. And this is called focus focus. And then we will need one more, which I should have written in smaller so this would fit, but that's fine, is we can take any product of A and B. And of course, we can actually take any product of all of them, of any of them, but I want to name this. I want to say this is torque type. So I'll just call it torque. So anyway, so that's some, some examples of integrable systems. 
If you're familiar with non-degenerate integral systems, these are the basic examples of non-degenerate integrable systems, which I'll come back to that point later. And I'll have a definition, two points with isomorphic neighborhoods. have the same type. So generally speaking, this is isomorphic in the sense of integrable systems. So you have a symplectomorphism between the neighborhoods and a diffeomorphism of Rn that takes one map to the other. Um, and I'm going to say that my integrable system is toric. If F generates an S1 to the N action. And notice that this implies that every point has toric type. It's pretty easy to check. Um, okay. So that's the basic uh, introduction uh, objects that I'm looking at. But the next thing I want to look at is a special kind of integrable system called semi-toric. And so what does it mean to be semi-toric? So I'm going to write my f, instead of writing it as little f1, little f2, I'm going to write it as phi g, just to like emphasize that they're different. And I'm going to say this is semi-toric if we're going to have three conditions. First of all, this only applies in the four-dimensional case. And then phi generates an S1 action. So if I just the moment map for circle action. And then we also assume that every point has either torque type or focus focus type. So we're going to insist that locally it either looks like focus focus or toric, sorry, yeah. So of these, we're just ruling out the hyperbolic case. Um, and this corresponds with, I just want to make a note, this agrees with the standard definition by work of Ilias and Vunak. Um, well, Sue Chaperon. So a bunch of people's work, basically. So basically, it's not usually defined in terms of forcing a local number form on it, but uh, they've proved the local number form theorem that you need. So it's usually defined as being a non-degenerate system which reduces you to these cases without hyperbolic type, no hyperbolic blocks. So it's equivalent. Once you agree that that is non-degenerate. Okay. So why do we care about semi-toric systems? Well, basically they're very well behaved. Yep. So I've assumed connected in the beginning of the universe meaning everything is always connected. And, and people don't always, but I'm doing it, right? Um, to state semi-toric, no. But my theorems are always going to be yes, basically. Um, and the theorem to do, do knock is if M is compact, so we're assuming it's semi-toric, 
f, the preimage of, of eta c is connected all eta c and e2. So this is basically a generalization of the famous connectedness result of uh, atia. Right? So um, it, it also works in this case. So if, if we had a the torus moment map, we would know that this is always true. Um, so this is if M is semi-toric and compact. I was trying to imply it, but I think yeah, better to state it clearly. Um, so, and there's further results. So yes, sort of, yes, and I think by the end of my talk, I'll be really clear what's wrong with hyperbolic, I'm hoping. Um, so the further results, we have a complete classification due to Palmer. This is several papers, but I'm just sort of mushing them together into one list of names. There's a complete classification. I'm not really going to explain it because not really what I'm doing. But we also have minimal models and some work on quantization, which is due to the above people plus Kane and LeFlock. So again, I'm sort of mushing papers together. But anyway, so great. So Classification is great, and we have more things beyond that. That's a really good start. So we're going to talk about the pros here. So semi-toric systems have two obvious pros. They're well understood. That's one. And there are many examples. That's two. OK, that sounds great. What are the cons, though? As mathematicians, we're always greedy. We want more examples. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. Basically, is what universe can we extend this result in? And hopefully some of these, but right now I'm not talking about that. Is this any question? Because this is sort of the basic, the basic uh, okay. okay. So let me talk about some examples. And I want to be clever. Yes, this is what I will do. Because I'm going to want to come back to these, so don't let me erase them. So, so we can let M be S2 cross S2 with the product symplectic form. And we can let this phi of x, y just be the third component of x. So this is just generate spinning one of them. So this is going to tell us that our fixed set has or is two two spheres, right? Uh, and so the picture. I'm going to try to fit this in one board. I have to be very economical. My picture looks like this. I've got a minimal tipic sphere, a maximal two sphere, and then my moment map is just projection. Then this is torque. So I'm going to say it's secretly torque. Of course, it's not a very well kept secret because we all know, I think, the two torus action there. But my point is that it's not torque itself. We can extend it. So, right now, I'm talking about when can you extend things, but I'm just kind of using shorthand. And so then we can let m hat be equal to the equal blow up of m at three points in one fixed sphere. 
So this implies that the fixed set is S2 disjoint union S2 disjoint union three points and B hat well, hold this here and B hat of P1 is B hat of P2 equals B hat of P3. So here is my picture of this. So I have two fixed spheres and three fixed points. And they all map to the same points under the moment manage. And the claim here, now I'm not going to put this on one board, is that M is not toric. And I'm going to say this is due to Karshan, but really this direction is kind of obvious. But the other direction, she proved that sort of not having three things like this is necessary and sufficient. But it is semi-toric. And this is Holoch Sabatini Sabe. In both cases, this means secretly, meaning you can extend, you can find G so that it's semi-toric. Yep. Thank you. I'm had, thank you. Good point. Everybody happy with these two examples? And then, since we like blowing up so much, we can keep on doing it. I know, that's my idea. Let's actually maybe I'll use this one since this is a short board anyway. My idea is I'll just hide these and I won't worry about them. They're just gonna be sitting there for me. Um, so the final example I wanna look at too is um, tilde equals equal blow ups of m hat at p1, p2, p3. So I now can blow up those three fixed points. And this implies m has two fixed s2s and six fixed points and three S2s with stabilizer Z2. So now I can draw my picture here. Again, I have a maximal and minimal Uh, ma maximum minimal fixed spheres, then six fixed points, and three spheres with generic stabilizers, E2. And the claim is that M tilde is not semi toric. And So this is the same plus Simington. So there's, there's no semi-toric. You cannot find a G so that this is semi-toric. So these are the basic examples. That I'm gonna prove at the end. So that's sort of, yeah, the point of these is what we'll see. So I think what you can see is, Toric are great, but that's somewhat limited. There's definitely cases where semi toric will help us, but there's still nice, this is not that pathological a guy, right? So we definitely have lots of interesting semi toric examples. We also have a lot of examples where it doesn't reach. And this is part of the reason why we want more examples. Um, also, higher dimensional examples. So nothing higher dimensional semi toric because, well, that's the definition. Questions? Okay. 
Okay, so when I want to go, maybe I'll actually, I don't maybe care about this so much for now. Okay. So this was, this was one of the pieces in the background. And the other piece in the background is complexity one actions. So like I said, I want to generalize this, and this is sort of where I'm looking for generalizations. So now let's just fix phi from m to rn minus 1. So instead of mapping to rn, I'm only mapping to rn minus 1. And then we're going to say that um, omega phi is a complexity one space. This is the definition. If phi generates a T, which is defined to be equal to S1 to the N minus one action. So I'm just going to use t for s1 to the n minus 1. That's the biggest torus I'm generally going to be assuming I have. So it's convenient to have a name. So what are some examples? So let h and t act linearly on ch plus 1 with moment map CH. So here H is the dimension of H. So you have a torus acting on a space, or you have a sub, well, an abelian group acting on a space, which is one, uh, one more than twice the dimensions. Then Y dot equal, well, and then let Y dot equal uh, you're right. You're right. Thank you. Ah, I can just lift it. No worries. Let y dot equal t cross h h naught cross c h plus one with moment map phi of t a to z equals a to So, yeah. No. Nope. A T here is M minus one dimensional still. Am I dropping too much the dimension? Which, which is n and which is h? This is a. Uh. These are h's. Maybe my h's look too much like my n's. Those are. And is it um, t cross subscript h? H is acting, I guess, on the whole. T acts on it. No, no, I know, but when you want. Uh, yeah, h, h acts on the. the T by, well, I guess right multiplication, but it hardly matters, but I think of it as right multiplication, and acts on H plus one by the representation. So this is just supposed to be the local, if you've seen local models, these are just the local models. So claim, so this is an example, that's first a claim, you need to put a symplectic structure here, but it's quite standard that you can do so. And claim is that locally, this is the only example. So this is the local normal form theorem, but people also call it equivariant Darboux because that's really all it is. Questions? Okay. So, good.
So because these are the local exam the local examples, they're pretty important to understand. And so one sort of always starts out by understanding what happens in a local normal form. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to assume y is tall, which just means that if I take the reduced space, which is just, of course, phi inverse of 0 divided by t, this has more than one point. So I'm, I want to talk about the case where the reduced space has more than one point. And a lemma, which is due to Yael and myself, is that there exists a unique C. So in CH plus 1, this is still H, not N. So I, it's a unique element, uh, a unique integer in, Z, in ZH plus 1, so that all the coefficients are non-negative, um, such that the defining polynomial which is just defined by P of T A to Z is the product of a Z I C I. And this is easiest to think if you haven't seen local normal form, honestly, you can just assume that H is equal to T. And that's the easiest case. And like, it's just, it, it's everything that happens there, just a question of being clean to do the general case. Then this really just is an honest to God polynomial such that this, induces a homeomorphism from the reduced space to C. So when I look at these models, there's only two possibilities. My reduced space is a point, or my reduced space is a copy of C. It's because of the complexity one. Uh, that's local, of course, then more generally your reduced space will either be a zero or two-dimensional manifold. Any questions? And then I need another definition that P has degree and is the sum over I of the CIs. So this is just a normal sense of, of when it's a polynomial, it's just the normal sense of degree of a polynomial. So it's not too surprising of a definition. Okay. So I have 20 minutes left, right? That's correct. Okay, good. Doing okay with timing. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some examples of these. So one example would be y equals c2 and lambda dot xy is lambda x lambda inverse y. So my circle is just acting by speed one and minus one. Then of course, my moment map is norm of x squared minus norm of y squared. I guess I've multiplied everything by two. Yeah. I can put in my, yeah. I'm just gonna multiply everything by two. No, I'll put them in, I'm sorry, I'm being indecisive. And what is my defining polynomial? I'm just gonna take the product of x and y. It's easy to see that's invariant, and it's not hard to check that that induces a homeomorphism. 
And more generally, I can do the same thing, but now, instead of just acting with speed one, I can act with speed P and Q minus Q. You can also do this. And of course, you're again familiar with the moment map. Um, but now the defining polynomial is x to the q, y to the p. Right? And you can again see that that's invariant. And again, it's relatively easy to check that it shows the homomorphism, but it's some work. I also want to do one example to show that we're not stuck in two dimensions. We can really do this for any representation. So here's an example. We can act with weight 1, 1, and then weight minus 1, 0, and then weight 0, minus 1. And uh, the moment map is 1 half x squared minus 1 half y squared, 1 half x squared minus 1 half z squared. And you can check that the defining monomials, you just take the product of them. So these are just some examples of defining monomials, what they look like in practice. OK. So but I really want to go back to integrable systems. In order to have an integral system, I will have to add another function g. And Poisson commuting is going to be equivalent to this new function b t invariant. So that is what I want to add. I want to fix a t invariant g from y to r. And I also want to fix L greater than or equal to zero. And I want to let TPLG be the degree L Taylor polynomial. Of G at my point P, which I'm going to pick my point to be one zero zero. And this, of course, means that I get an induced function from the reduced space to R, right? So my Taylor polynomial, so by it's a slight cheat, but I can look at it as a function from my local model to R, and this induces a function on the reduced space. Um, everybody happy with this? So now I can define my main, one of my main new things is I can say P is an ephemeral, ephemeral critical point of G if the following is true and is greater than one and then I want the degree, so Anne remembers the degree of my defining polynomial. I want that degree to be greater than one, which if you've looked at complexity one space is the same as the point being exceptional. And then I want uh, my degree n minus one Taylor polynomial of g to vanish. And then I want the zero set, zero set of my degree n Taylor polynomial is homeomorphic to R. This is my definition of what it means to be an ephemeral critical point. And this is very much, well, this is related to the Morse conditions. It's a little bit different. I think I should do some examples of this. 
right? So I can go back, and what are some examples? I can let g be the real part of xy. So remember, I said that the defining polynomial was a homeomorphism from my reduced space to C. So if I have a copy of C, and then I just look at the real part, that's obviously the zero set will be homeomorphic to R, right? And notice that this, if I had been really good, I'd kept this board. Is the same as a focus focus point, right? So this is the focus focus point coming back. But I can also do it here. I can let g be the real part of x to the q, y to the p. So that's another example that was not focus focus, but I'm still happy with. And here, of course, I can let g be the real part of x, y, z. And more generally, I can just always take the real part of my defining polynomial. This will always be ephemeral. I'm not saying it's the only ephemeral point, but it's kind of like the er ephemeral point function. Sorry. Everybody happy? Yeah? Yes, but I'm sorry. I'm giving you a same answer. That's about to come up. Yes. So, right, ephemeral means lives briefly and then dies quickly, right? That's what ephemeral means. And um, so I have, I have one more, one and a half more boards in them. I think I'll answer all of your questions. So here's my definition. An integrable system M omega F equals phi G is near toric if two things happen. First, phi is the moment map of a complexity one action. So here we have n minus one component turn phi and just one component in G. And two, every point has either toric type or ephemeral type. So we allow any points of either of those forms. And so what would an example be? is any semi-toric system, which I cannot spell, but there we go. Any semi-toric system, right? Because I've already, in this case, for a four-dimensional case, right, we know the first component is a moment mapper circle action, which is complexity one, but then I've already said that every focus focus point is ephemeral. And so I allow those. So I'm allowing all of those things. Everybody happy with that? So this is sort of, one of our basic examples, and here is the main theorem. And I should say, I should have said this earlier, this is joint work with Danielle Seppe. So I will quote him successfully in all the theorems, but I should have mentioned him just overall. This is joint with him. So here's the main theorem in this paper which hopefully will be posted soon. So if um, omega f equals phi g is near toric and phi is proper, then 
f inverse of a to c is connected for all eta in Rn minus 1 and c in R. This is our main theorem. Is we can redo the Knox in this more general case. So he also did proper, that's not new, but anyway, this is, that's the main point. Any questions about the statement? Because what I'm going to do the proof, and I think hopefully a lot of things will come together in the proof. That's my dream, anyway. We'll see whether you agree. So I'm fixing an A to N C. So proof. So without loss of generality, the reduced space contains more than one point, right? I mean, if it's empty, well, duh. And if it's one point, well, duh, right? So we're going to assume that. This implies it's a closed connected oriented surface topologically, right? I mean, I've already stated this means that locally it looks like R2. We know as oriented because of the symplectic form on the reduced space generically. It's connected by, by Atiyah's famous theorem, right? Applied directly here. Well, I guess I'm in the proper case, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, everybody happy with that so far? So, okay, so now, the part is not totally obvious. I mean, in fact, it's basically the content of our paper. There exists a smooth structure on sigma so that, and so that the induced function G bar from sigma to R is a Morse function. So if the pre-image, if the action was free, then this will just be the standard structure, but otherwise we may have to change the smooth structure. So I'm gonna put a new smooth structure on, but the smooth structure is going to be very nice. It's a Morse function, but we can say more than that. The critical set of G bar is, so it's the set of orbits of torrent type so it's a dg if i restrict it to the kernel of d phi is equal to zero so if i just take g equal to phi it looks like it's a regular point maybe if phi is regular but like obviously it's not really a regular point i just copied phi so basically you just subtract the appropriate multiple of phi and then it's just if g is critical we're going to call this these are the ones this is the natural ones if you think about it so, and I should say, and each critical point has index plus zero or two. So first of all, to answer your question, why are the ephemeral called ephemeral? They have disappeared here. G bar, so the ephemeral points will descend to something, right? But, oh, and I should say in, right, I should have said in the inverse of eta, obviously. Um, they will not be torque, they will not be critical for the new smooth structure. I've sort of bent the structure to make them regular. That's basically part of it. Um, and so going on, great. So what happens when I have a, t a manifold and all the critical, none of the critical points has index one or n minus one, is all the fibers are connected, right? This is a step in the famous proof. So this implies that G bar inverse of C is connected. 
And then if you just think about it, it's very easy to see that this implies that C inverse of eta intersect G inverse of C is connected. Which is F inverse, right? I should say. Right, so this is the proof. We're just doing more theory with a strange, smooth structure. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what I wrote didn't make any sense. Okay, so are there any questions about the main proof? So. Well, it's not smooth, is I force it to be smooth. I'm like, hiya, there's your new smooth structure, <laughs> right? <laughs> that falls from a lemma that Yale and I proved. Um, you look at the local form. Yeah. I mean, really, it's like, it's like this long from the local number form theorem, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but I don't know if there's anything I mean, if you think about it as a reduced space, then you can think that may be a helpful way of doing it. It's sort of the only option. Um, yeah, it's two dimensional. Yeah. Two -dimensional, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but like I said, it's, it's not so, I mean, this is not such a big proof, right? But it's also like not necessarily like I feel like we're doing it now. Um, so let me just point out a corollary of, a corollary of proof. I know, I, I hate people who call this corollaries, but I'm doing it. First of all, my surface has to be a two-sphere, right? That's partly when you have no points, when the only points you have are index zero and two, only options are two-sphere. And if I look at the number of orbits of toric type, such that dg is equal to the kernel, of d phi is equal to zero. This is equal to two. There has to be one minimum and one maximum, nothing else, no more and no less. And so what does this tell me? This gives me a lot of information about what it can be, which ones can be, um, which ones admit semi-toric systems and which ones, sorry, neurotoric systems and which do not. So the one thing is if eta is in the interior of C of M and P is a fixed point, then we always have but it's a critical point, it, it can't help it. And so fixed points always count against this in the interior. Um, so um, toric implies exists at most two fixed points in the inverse of eta which tells us that m hat is not toric, okay, which we knew anyway, but that's just one, so right, this is m hat, it's got the three points, not allowed, so you know that that's sort of one way of thinking about why it's not toric. Um, you can even prove you couldn't put toric type, even if it doesn't uh, extend to a torus section. I think those are probably the same, but, but also, so, um, semi-toric implies there exists at most two fixed points in the inverse of eta that don't have weights plus one minus one, right? So we do semi-toric the only extra allowed thing is focus, focus. And if we look at focus, focus, so 
we see that the circle action must have weights one minus one. I mean, you can put a one half here, it doesn't matter, right? And so if it doesn't have weights plus one and minus one, it doesn't, being semi-toric doesn't really help you beyond being toric. So this is how we see that M tilde is not semi-toric. Because if you look at that picture, Oh, thank you. If we look at that picture, we see that we have three points that map to the same point, but have weights minus one plus two. So that's too much to be semi-toric. So um, I guess I'm over time, but I will just finish with a hope. We hope all complexity one spaces with m divided by t is s2 are nearly toric. So we have this whole Morse theory obstruction to these things existing, and this obstruction doesn't work here. Just to be clear, I'm not claiming we proved this, right? But but it's a natural thing to hope. I think that's a good place to stop.